Welcome back to another Creative Anger video. Today we're going to take a look at this cute little effects light fixture. It's called the Soothing Aurora LED Night Light. This one belongs to someone I know. I've been asked to take a look at it. This one has four colors, red, green, and blue LEDs, plus a 5 milliwatt red laser diode. The green LED has started flickering while the unit is rotating to create the aurora effect. I'm going to roll the intro and when it's finished we'll take a look at what this unit looks like. To turn it on, I'm going to plug it in through a, quote, USB safety tester for the sake of knowing how much current this unit consumes. Everything's turned on. I'm seeing 5.2 volts and 0.01 amps as standby. Right now, you've got red, green, blue, plus the laser. And the voltage has dropped to 5.17 volts, and it is drawing 0.3 amps on the dot. That's about 1.5 watts at 5 volts. I'm going to shut this off now. And disconnect it. I've got a guess as to how this unit works. I think it uses a basic five conductor slip ring, and I think that's getting dirty through frequent use. Considering reasonably good quality five-way slip rings do tend to cost twice as much as this light does, if I'm right, I can't say I'm too surprised. Now, I don't normally disassemble consumer grade products. I do tend to work with a lot of industrial grade products. So I don't have a spudger, as Clive would call it. My Weha screwdriver kit came with a chip lifter. This tool is normally used for dip package integrated circuits, but I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. I want to try and pry up this plastic cover without cracking or breaking it. I can see under it that in the very center, there's a single Phillips head screwdriver holding the inner lens in place. Just trying to get into the crack. Actually, this is going to work. It's popping open. Well. That was easier than I was expecting. I was expecting to have to fight that, or maybe it was glued in. But no. This is interesting. I am very wrong about how this unit works. Very wrong indeed. As you can see, there are eight LEDs. And two, or three, sorry, three red laser diodes. So we've got eight LEDs and three red laser diodes. This is your infrared receiver for the remote control. And there's a little speaker inside because obviously a device like this needs a built-in speaker. So the question is, why is green getting all flickery? Let's take the PCB out. If there's one thing that Clive has that I wish I did right now, it would be a magnifying glass. OK, 
Okay, so from what I can tell, this is the main uh, this is the main IC that drives the entire unit. Because this has audio circuitry as well, I'm guessing this is the op amp related to the audio. Now, these right here appear to be the red, green, and blue uh, transistors. This appears to be the transistor that drives the three LEDs. And this appears to be the transistor that drives the motor. Unfortunately, because this isn't a slippering type assembly, I don't know if I can actually repair this unit as it stands because I am not going to have surface mount transistors of this size. Now, this transistor is not placed properly, so maybe there's something I can do about reseeding it if this happens to be the one that drives the green. I have my doubts. But it's definitely an interesting design. You've got the three outputs that are soldered for your uh, for the three lasers. You've got M plus and M minus, which is for the motor. You've got all of the additional I/O necessary to run the audio input, the speaker, the button panel on the front, all coming down this side over here. And then you've got this little horrible little dainty speaker here. But, in theory, it might also be able to audio trigger. I don't know. So, in this case, unfortunately, I don't think there's a heck of a lot that I can do. So I'm going to button this back up. Now, just to note, I did look it up. This is the LTK8002D Class AB audio amplifier. So I was right. This is the audio amplifier used to drive that speaker. One of the things that I'm trying to do is come up with some tests that I can do to verify that these transistors are functioning accordingly. The problem that I've got is these are 0603 size, and nothing that I have is exactly small enough to deal with that. All, all of my test measurement gear has alligator clips and large probes. I don't have anything small enough to properly meter those I mean, I can see in some parts, some surface mount components are very poorly mounted. This transistor is not great. Uh, R14 over here is not great. The board's kind of dirty. It's like someone hand soldered some of these things on and did a really crappy job. But as a whole, I really don't know how much more that I can do for this specific unit. And I feel a little bit defeated because I wanted this to be a great video of a prime example of how a basic slippering system worked all right so apparently i can't count there's actually nine leds there's three of each color and each color just appears to be run in series which makes sense if the entire thing runs at five volts they'll be a little bit under voltage but that's better than over voltaging them because then they'll die so i'm gonna go ahead and Put this back together, turn it on, and see what happens. Unfortunately, this is where I need to call it a day. If the green LEDs do go bad, I'll order the transistor and do a video on how to solder 0603 sized items by hand. I wish this were a slip ring system so I could just clean the ring and call it a day, but I suppose this makes a bit more financial sense in terms of manufacturing costs. Let me know what you thought of this video. Is this something you'd like to see more of? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to click on that thumbs up button if you like this video, click subscribe if you like what I do, and have a fantastic day. See ya. I know. I know, I already gave you the see ya. But really, I will be the first to admit that I wanted this video to come out a bit more interesting. I spent more time cutting and applying the vinyl to this battery bank just to have my logo on something that I did filming this sketch. I was really hoping there would be something that's reasonably serviceable, but in the end, it's likely just an intermittent flaky transistor in a package so small that I don't have the part laying around. I really do want your comments. What do you want to see as the viewers? 
I spend a lot of time trying to predict what my viewers want to see, but I'd really like to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below.